recording the meeting. So welcome everybody officially. Uh, welcome to uh, our panel discussion on building community among peer educators. This is a joint activity between 3CFN and ACLA. So 3CFN, the California Community Colleges Success Network, which is a statewide professional learning network to help our educators create more student-centered, equitable, and successful spaces. And ACLA is our national tutoring organization um, out there helping us empower our peer educators of all kinds, tutors, SI leaders, embedded tutors, everybody uh, who, who, is, who is doing peer or near peer assistance, ACLA is here to assist us on the national level. And today we decided to team up to create this panel on how we are building community online, which is of course incredibly challenging. Um, just some quick introductions. Again, if you're just getting here, go ahead and introduce yourself, name, college, role. It says uh, just uh, you uh, are here for credit from Pierce College. Just make sure you say who you are in the chat, and that's how we're going to sign you in. Um, you don't have to click on a link. Uh, again, my name is Crystal. I'm the director of our big old tutoring center at Pierce College, and now our completely online tutoring center. I'm also a coordinator for 3CFN. Um, and specifically, I really focus on how we um, empower our peer educators and our learning assistance professionals. So that's tutors, embedded tutors, SI leaders, faculty members, classified staff, everybody. Um, how do we build community? How do we create um, spaces that are safer, braver, and um, more welcoming for students so that they can, they can thrive in any environment, including this crazy COVID online environment? So, um, I have a, we have some tutors who are going to be on our panel today, so I'm going to introduce the two tutors from Pierce College, and then I'm going to turn it over to some of our other ACLA representatives so they can introduce their students as well. So for my part, I have invited two Pierce College tutors today to talk to us about how they create community online in this crazy environment. So um, I would like to introduce uh, Jocelyn aparco Quispy. There she is. You want to say wave? There. All right. She's waving. There you go, she's pinned there, there she goes. So uh, Jocelyn is from Pierce College. She is an embedded astronomy tutor, uh, so which means she works directly with students and faculty members in their classrooms. And um, she is either going to be an aerospace engineering or astrophysics major, and she's going to be transferring to ho hopefully UCLA very soon. Um, and then I would also like to introduce Joey Otzel. Here's Joey. So uh, Joey is also from a Pierce College student. He's the general math and stats tutor, and he's also the tutor leader for math for us. So he helps create community and mentorship for other math tutors. Uh, he's a mechanical engineering major, and he will very soon be going to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, at least if they know what's good for them. So that's for me. Now I'd like to turn it over to Megan, who can introduce herself and her students as well. Hi everybody, um, my name is Megan Keebler. Keebler like the cookies if you're old enough to remember commercials. Um, so I'm currently the director of the SI program at Chafee College. So I've been with Chafee for about four years now, but um, I've pretty much made my entire career in learning assistance. So I started out as a writing tutor at Long Beach City College. Um, and then once I graduated, um, I got the job there as coordinator of the center. Um, and really, you know, I actually plan to be a classroom instructor, but working with folks like you just completely changed my life trajectory. So um, working with peer educators and folks um, who really make student success, their goal and their passion is really what kind of gets me out of bed in the morning. Um, and so I'm very, very happy that um, that my life trajectory changed because while I do love grammar, I didn't necessarily relish the idea of teaching it for the rest of my life. So instead I get to work with you lovely people. So that's fantastic. Um, so I have brought with me today, uh, Skyla Santa Cruz. Skyla, if you want to kind of give a little wave, there's Sky. Um, and so Skyla was, she started with us as one of our English SI leaders um, and was quickly promoted to one of what we call discipline leads. Um, so you might hear um, them reference that discipline lead. We realize sort of, you know, retroactively that it sounds like discipline, but it's supposed to be like discipline specific. Um, and so she became one of our DLs for English. Um, and then just this uh, past semester was promoted to our program assistant. So um, she's sort of my right-hand human. Um, she's there 
um, helping to kind of be the bridge between me and the SI leaders and just basically being awesome and having better ideas than me. Um, and so I'm very, very grateful to have her. So welcome, Sky. Um, I also brought with me Jasmine Mayfield, um, who goes by Mayfield. So I can't call her Jasmine. It just sounds weird. Um, and so Mayfield started with us as an SI leader for history or philosophy, kind of both. Um, and so she's sort of our philosopher, our resident philosopher. Um, and so again, after working with us for just a semester or two, um, was promoted to one of our discipline leads as well. And so now she sort of heads our um, kind of multidisciplinary group. And so she's got SI leaders from history and uh, philosophy and ASL and all sorts of all sorts of cool stuff. And so um, she's only been with us maybe a year and a half, two years, but it feels like longer. Um, so super, super excited to hear what she has to share today and just really excited to be here with you all. Thank you. All right. Beautiful. Thank you all. Ted, you're up. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Ted Blake. I'm the Learning Center Coordinator at Mount San Jacinto College, something I never in my wildest dreams thought I would end up doing. But it's one of those jobs that finds you and that is created later. So I'm really excited. I was an Eng I thought I'd be an English professor, kind of like Megan, um, but here we are and what a blessing it's been. Um, I've been doing this for about 15 years and brought two uh, outstanding tutors. I'll introduce uh, Mary Rangel first, wave, give us a wave. Um, she is um, an extraordinary tutor. She wants to major in, or she is majoring in administration of justice and wants to be a criminal profiler. And um, she tutors statistics, and we were just talking about this, never thought she'd be a math person, but wow, stats is something that she tutors and reinforces that every day. And Mary, I'll just tell you, when we had to shift to online tutoring, um, Mary was one of our trainers because she had been doing online tutoring when it was very small at our campus. So we really leaned on her last April to get all of our tutors trained quickly. And she still does that with tutors. So thank you, Mary. And she's also one of our tutor mentors. She plays a role. She makes videos. She did the icebreaker for our tutor meeting today that we just got out of. Uh, so thank you, Mary. You're, you're just wonderful to have. Um, and then James Parker is our other tutor here. So wave James. <laughs> He's a mathematics major and I can't wait till he comes back to our college and becomes a professor because he's going to be amazing. Um, he's been a tutor for a long time, tutors writing and math. And um, James also was one of our program specific tutors last semester. He tutored with the Emoja program. And I'll tell you that James is like one of our big people on campus. He is involved in everything. We see him all the time and he is just such an amazing young man for Mount San Jacinto, an example for our students. You're an inspiration, James. So that's our folks. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. All right. And next up, um, our moderator, Tamron. Oh, I think I got me as a spotlight. Hey, everyone. My name is Tamron. I'll be moderating today's panel discussion. It'll just be me. I don't have students with me. That's why you need to come next week and you get to meet my fantastic staff there. But I am the coordinator of supplemental instruction at Cal State Long Beach. Very similarly to everyone that spoke before me, I thought I was going to be an English professor, got my master's in English, certificates in teaching, writing and reading, super jazzed, and then learning assistance found me. Um, so I was a writing, to, writing slash humanities slash study schools tutor back in SF State in grad school. From there, I became kind of the part-time director of the tutoring program that hired me. And from then on, I moved on to do advising support, transfer support, um, tutoring stuff. But my love has been SI for probably the past four-ish years now. Um, was at Skyline as their coordinator, now I'm in Long Beach. I'm also a professional development coordinator for ACLA, so I help coordinate and present wonderful events like these where we can bring people together and really just talk shop about learning assistance, tutoring, SI, and stuff about our jobs. Well, thank you. All right. So uh, just uh, to set a couple of quick ground rules so we kind of know what direction we're going and how it's going to work. I just want to talk a little bit about how today is going to go. Um, today, kind of our goals are to think about some strategies that work for all of us um, when we're working online, especially and engaging students in conversation and community. Uh, we also want to talk a little bit about how we can apply what we talked about today 
um, to our own practice. Uh, we'll have a panel for um, the first hour. Um, so we'll hear from our student panelists about how they're creating community and connections in an online environment. And then at the end of that hour, if you got to go, go. Um, but if you want to stay, we'll have some breakout rooms where we can really dig into what we learned, what our strategies are, how we can share what we know, and maybe even generate some questions for further inquiry. So, um, so for now, everyone's going to be muted. We're all going to start muted, but um, you know, this is going to end in a dialogue. So if you have questions, please do type them in the chat. The chat is for you. Please interact, ask, answer each other's questions, give each other props, give each other lots of reactions. I mean, sometimes, you know, we need to really step it up to create community in some of these Zoom environments. So please do use that chat, use those reactions liberally, you know, give people props, let them know what they're doing. Sometimes it can be pretty alienating talking on a Zoom call. So please do use it liberally. If you wanna raise your hand, I'll show you how to do that. If you can't fight, raise your hand, you wanna talk, you can put a one in the chat. Already people are using the chat, so that's good, thank you. Um, if you don't know where that chat is, all the action is at the bottom a task bar um, of your Zoom link or of your Zoom uh, window rather. There's a little button that says chat. Go ahead and click there and introduce yourself if you haven't already. Tell us what your name is, tell us what college you're at, and tell us what role you play at your college. If you want to raise your hand, if you've got old school Zoom, you'll click participants and then that'll bring up a raise hand button. If you have an updated Zoom, then you just click reactions and then you can go to raise hand. So if you wanna practice raising your hand right now, please go right ahead and see if you can find where that is. I won't call on you for now, but later if you raise your hand, I will call on you. Um, so um, if you wanna unmute yourself, if you've got something to say, find that old timey microphone, uh, click it once to unmute yourself and click it again to mute yourself again. So uh, last uh, point, we always like to set community agreements, thinking about how we're gonna work together so we can wrap our minds around how, how we can be successful. Be ready to participate actively when prompted. We wanna hear you. This isn't just somebody else talking. Uh, be present. We will be going to, with our panel until four o'clock, but if you wanna stick around from four to 4.30, we would love that. Um, we'll do some breakout rooms, so just be ready for that. It's totally fine if not all of this stuff makes a whole lot of sense to you right away. We are literally doing this for a living for the rest of our careers. So um, do feel free to keep asking those questions today and moving forward. Um, and then just remember to be kind. It's kind of scary to be up here and talking. So make sure that you give plenty of love in the chat and plenty of reactions. All right, so that's it for me. Timuron, take it over and show us how it's done. I'm on mute. No matter how much we use Zoom, we forget, you know, if we're muted or not. So anyways, so before we dive into our panel discussion, I actually want to see where all of your thoughts lie. So in a second, I'm going to open up a poll everywhere. Um, so get out, open your computer browser, get your phone out. Um, we're going to use a poll everywhere to kind of just see why community is important to you now, because we have almost 60 people in the Zoom call. So shout out to Crystal for helping organize. Um, so you're here for a reason. You're interested in something. Community speaks to you. So when I share my screen, feel free to follow the directions on the top bar and answer a few buzz, give a few buzzwords why community is important, and we will see what happens. And we're off. So Go to pollev.com slash COSUOBSI0072, or you can just text COSUOBSI0072 to 22333 and, you know, give us some praise, give us a buzzword. Why is community important now? Answer doesn't have to be long. It could be literally a few buzzwords.
Okay, we're starting to get some stuff. So support network, I like it. Connections. Ooh, health, mental support. Okay, friends. Ooh, what's going on here? Connections becoming a really big buzzword for us. Crave. Friends, okay. Communication and support is growing. Whoa. Didn't expect you to get all crazy. Love it. Give you all a few cup, like a minute or two to get your thoughts in. Man, I love good work, Cloud. This is where the English major part of me kind of sticks out still. All right, so it looks like the cloud's slowing down a little bit, but we have some good feedback. Um, so in a, if you're not familiar with the word cloud, how word cloud works is it takes a bunch of folks' responses to a survey or a question, and the more often a word comes up, the bigger that word will grow in the cloud. So it sounds like panelists, as you're approaching your questions, some of the really big stuff that folks are throwing out there is making connections developing friends, getting support, building a network, taking care of our mental health. You know, we're stuck in a quarantine. So what does you know, community building mean in this environment? So, you know, keep these buzzwords in mind because this is what our audience is gravitating towards as well. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen if Zoom will let me. Yes, it will. Good job, Zoom, proud of you. Um, and let's go ahead and get things started. So let me open up my list of questions. So again, the way this will work is I'm going to ask our panel a few questions. Each college is going to alternate on who starts first, just so we minimize overlap. As Crystal iterated, please throw questions in the chat or affirmations, or if your campus is doing something cool that's related to what our panelists is doing, feel free to participate. Even though our panelists will be the highlight for this first hour, we want to see and hear what you have to say in our conversation. Um, so let's go ahead and start with the first question. L.A. Pierce, you're going to be up first for this one. Um, there's an old saying I think many of us heard. It takes a village. Um, you know, if you want to get something done, it takes a lot of people to help get that done. On our campuses, our village are other departments, faculty, stakeholders, you know, people of that sort. So L.A. Pierce, to kind of get the ball rolling in our conversation, what is your relationship or community with campus partners? And what are you doing to maintain this relationship, especially now that we've been in quarantine, people feel siloed, there's more isolation. Like, how are you still building connections across campus to folks that would normally be supporting you if it weren't for this period of time? All sure. right. Take it away, Joey. Thank you. Thanks, Tamaran. Uh, so... I, I personally have a unique position to work alongside the faculty liaison for mathematics, who's also the math department head. So while I don't directly work with multiple professors, in the position I am as a tutor, I can observe what's happening with the two T's and students that come into us and convey that information to the liaison. And we can determine what's working, what's not working, uh, and what's going on. One thing I'll bring up later is the idea of with the absence of a campus to be working on, uh, students are finding their own places to gather and congregate, such as applications like Discord. And a lot of professors are not aware of that program. And these are things I like to convey to my liaison. So they're aware of what are students using? How are they using it? Can we use that to be more effective and, and connect directly with them? Very cool. Um, and then Jocelyn, go yeah. Ahead and go next. yeah, hi. Um, well, something that I always say about the connection with the faculty is that it's really important uh, whenever you're working with teams because the idea of a team is having collaboration, understanding the roles that you're in, and understanding the goal that you're going forward. So whenever I, I am with the faculty, uh, which it won't be very often, but I always try to make it as often as possible just to know the feedback that I get from them because they are the they are the people that know what is going on in the classes. 
uh, I asked them, uh, what do the students need? Do they, what do you think uh, they are not understanding so much? Uh, do you want me to help me in some other way? And I got really good feedback from them. And I used that feedback to, um, to translate that to the students whenever they see me or whenever I get the chance to talk to them. Uh, something else that I want to mention about that is that again with the uh, with this course is something that not many professors are so aware about, which I intend to always tell them, um, hey, you can use this course, which some professors, uh, thankfully, they were really open-minded and opened uh, their own discords for the classes that are having to turn for. Right on. So I heard a lot of good stuff there. It sounds like one of the best ways to maintain a community and have other like campus partners involved in your program. Well, let me spell my name. So um, not, not that that sounded egotistical or anything. Um, so it sounds like faculty have been a really good source of support for those cross campus relationships. Um, and it sounds like this, this period of being online is forcing us to get a lot more creative with maybe different platforms and things we haven't utilized yet, like Discord. Um, I have a Discord on my campus um, just internally, and we can talk about that later. But Discord's popping with the amount of customization. I'm not paid by Discord, so I'm just speaking from experience. Um, but I want to kind of throw the question to MSJC and talk, ask, you know, Mary and James, like, are there different programs? Is your experience pretty similar with working with faculty? Is there anything else that you've been doing on your campus to foster this community? Mary, I have already seen you unmute, so let me go ahead and spotlight you and why don't you tackle that first question or tackle the question. We have um, monthly uh, place meetings. Um, place meetings are the Peer Learning Alliance um, for Collaborative um, Education. And so SI will be a part of it. Um, peer research assistants, first year experience mentors, uh, learning services, and we all just get together and we train. Um, we have people come in, our last meeting, we had a therapist come in and um, help us with like stress relieving stuff. Oh, um, nice. How to, you know, how to deal with the, you know, the whole pandemic and being able to help our two T's. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's our main thing. So it's monthly mm -hmm. and it, it, they're fun. We make them fun. So it's cool to have that. That's really dope. So you have campus partners coming in for professional development to help your staff out to kind of get them to boost morale and get them more motivated to engage right. and do their work. Mm -hmm. James, do you have anything to add with what you guys are doing on your campus or certain campus partners you've been building community with during this period? Yeah, I personally build community with my classmates, definitely, because mm. and other other groups like clubs such as Umoja that I'm a part of. But me and my classmates also set up Discord like Crystal, like they were talking about because you know, we don't you can email the professor, but some professors don't have face to face Zoom lectures, they'll just have video lectures. So mm -hmm. Both of my math classes since we've had the pandemic has gotten together with discords and then we help each other, you know, keep each other up to date on things and build community that way. Our tutors stay in the discord as well and we interact, send gifts and always support one another. Like if someone is sick or can't have their shift, like instantly you'll see that someone covered it, you know, like you'll just see it in the discord and Someone mentioned that today in our tutor meeting, how every time we see that someone can't make it to a shift, it's picked up so well. So the relationship between two T's, classmates, different clubs, MSJC is really like a family. In my eyes, that's what I've been seeing for the past three years, even prior to being online, so. That's awesome. And honestly, you gave an answer. I should have expected, but I didn't. Because when we talk about the campus communities, at least from the coordinator lens, we're thinking faculty, departments, things like that. But I love that you're emphasizing, like, it's the peers that have to build the community too, right? So it's like, you're reaching out to clubs, you're working with your peers, classmates that may not be tutors, but you're connecting with them to build that sense of belonging, which is so crucial during this time. Um, let's, kick the, let's kick the conversation to Shafee College. So Megan, Sky, Mayfield, um, you know, who are you building community with in terms of a campus community level? How are you maintaining those relationships during the pandemic? Um, please feel free to share. Um, something that I would like to add is that we like to do um, breakout sessions on 
fostering relationships with faculty, um, you know, and helping like SI leaders, like during those sessions, we help them create like their first email to their instructor because that can be very intimidating and scary, especially if it's like their first time SI, like being the SI leaders, SI instructor, you know, like working with them. Um, and then something that we also tell our leaders to do at the beginning of the semester is to, when they have their first meeting, is to fill out an instructor questionnaire. Um, and like there, we really try to aim for the SI leaders to set the boundaries with their instructors. So um, how many times a week are you willing to meet with me? Like, when's a good time to email you? Um, where is, where is, what's a good place to contact you? Um, and stuff like that. Um, Cause a lot of people are really like intimidated of like, you know, what's too much with contacting an instructor. But I feel like when you have your first meeting, that's a really good time to set the boundary um, to build that relationship. So I had a really good experience with my professor last semester where I asked like, okay, like what's some, a good day um, to week to meet with you? And, and then she would say like, oh, we can meet like bi-weekly. Um, and then in between those times, I would go ahead and email her like any updates and like ask um, like what she would want me to do in session or any other questions that I may have had for the class that week. Very cool. I, I love that point about checking in with the faculty because I think that also reminds us like, you know, this community building has to go both ways. We need, you know, our part, campus partners faculty see where we are, but you taking that extra step to see where they are and then building a game plan moving forward is awesome. and just shows that community takes is a two-way street. Uh, Mayfield, do you have anything to add from your experience? Yeah, sure. So I did notice that somebody asked, um, uh, you know, can you share this instructor questionnaire with us? And I'm, I mean, I'm sure we'd be happy to. Uh, for the most part, it does include questions, basically, you know, what do you, what do you want me to emphasize in session? Um, what is something that you don't want me to do? Uh, best way to reach you, as Skyla had said beforehand. And um, it's so much more than just meeting with them, you know, every week or every other week or emailing them every week to let them know how session is going. Um, it's also about maybe asking feedback um, as well as something that I personally love doing. Um, okay, so as mentioned earlier, I SI for history and philosophy. So maybe um, it's not too far-fetched to know that I have very old school professors that I SI for. Um, so I like to um, uh, torture, I mean, test uh, my icebreakers with them um, <laughs> that I plan on using in session and maybe a couple of like uh, activities that I have planned for the week. So that's a really fun way to be able to get, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm looking at the chat, to, uh, to really build that relationship as well. Because ever since quarantine happened, I mean, setting boundaries is like an absolute yes, please. But at, at the same time, like, you know, we're, we're online now. You can, you can see my bathroom. Let's, let's break some ice here. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I would add to that. <laughs> I, I love it. I mean, you know, you're also hitting on community takes consistency. I love, you know, I love that you're checking in with the folks you have to work with um, to develop kind of like that game plan on an ongoing basis. It's not just, hey, nice to meet you. I'm helping you and your students out. Talk to you like week 15, but there's a consistency there. And, you know, I, I love like you doing icebreakers with your professors and Joey made a really good point. Like, we, we all, I think, inherently don't like Zoom at some point. Like, we have a Zoom threshold. So I think, like, by inviting them to participate in the icebreakers or doing things that are, like, more entertaining or fun for them or just different for them could help break that, like, stale taste of nonstop Zoom. Um, you know, I hate my normal Zoom meetings, but events like this are so different. And it just shows how necessary they are for the types of interactions that we're still craving since the pandemic hit. So thank you. Those were all amazing answers. Um, let's dive into the second question because I think we've already started tackling it and I think we would love to hear more. Um, so let's you know, focus from the campus level and get down to a more local level and let's think about our team, our, you know, our fellow peer educators, our fellow tutors, our side leaders, or what have you. So what are you and your team doing to build community amongst your program or your learning center? Um, let's start with Mount San Jacinto College this time. So Ted, Mary, James, 
why don't you go ahead and get us started. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll begin. Um, so again, with the whole Discord, that's like our go-to. Um, like um, Parker had said, um, that's the way of us, you know, hey, I can't go, I can't, you know, I can't make it today. Can someone else cover me? It's done right there and then. But it also built um, relationships between us as the tutors and our coordinators, like with Ted and um, there's Maria, there's Evelyn, there's, we have quite a few because it's two campuses and put together in one. Because we have um, uh, Mount San Antonio College, just one big college, but we have a campus in San Antonio, campus in Menifee. We were separated before the pandemic, pandemic hit, now we're all underneath like one big umbrella. And so we met, a lot, you know, we had to meet each other through there. Um, we're always sending memes, just having that relationship, being comfortable around each other. Um, one way that uh, one of our tutors said it too, it's like, it allows us to not be nervous, you know, when it comes to your boss, you know, it's, it's just being comfortable. Um, being comfortable allows you to ask more questions and be more open to, you know, getting not criticism, but you know, like a little tips and tricks of, Hey, maybe you should do this this way. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's a way of helping us. Um, and also one of our tutors said that it's, we're working with them, not for them. So we're working, you know, together, um, partnership with our bosses and not just, you know, being underneath them and just kind of you know, not even trying to speak to them. So it's a it's a big way. It, it helps out so much. It really does. I bet you even got a heart reaction from Ted. So looks like he feels likewise. So that's super sweet. Uh, James, is there anything you want to add on to that? Yeah, it's it's just like I can agree. Like we're literally we meet once a month, like like we used to in person, and that we just had that meeting today. So. Even like someone said earlier, having breakout sessions, every every meeting there's breakout. I'm doing that camera test for me if like I'm freezing or he's freezing. I think he's freezing. Yeah, he's okay. freezing. So we'll swing back to James um, yeah, with meetings. Oh. Uh, no, you you're back, James. You were lagging on us for a minute. So we actually missed a good minute. Um, do you mind kind of going back, talking about your like monthly trainings where the team gets to come back together? Because I would hate yeah. to not cover that point. Okay, yeah, like in the monthly meetings, we really have breakout sessions, like similar to what someone said earlier. We have breakout sessions to where we can tackle questions like how we're doing now, but as a small group and then bring it back to the whole group. Nice. And one thing that our coordinators do that I've noticed is that they – they will jump into our tutoring sessions throughout the week and just check on us. Like if the room is empty mm -hmm. and there's no two C's there, every single coordinator that I have has jumped in to say, hey, how's it going? If you need anything, I'm here for you. You know, just, you know, kind of check on you. Like they really care about you as a person. And if you need anything, they know we're adapting still to online. They're there for you. And it's the same way with the students. So as a team, we just, we just work together, like, you know, and yeah, that's, that's just how we do it. The community is built and I enjoy it. Like I'm, I'm trying to stay on the question cause I know I could basically dive into the next one just on accident. Like it's all good. Time. So good. But we'll get there and you'll have, you'll have all the opportunities and you know, if you're around for the breakout portion from four to four thirty, that's where we can really dig in and talk shop. But I heard a lot of great stuff from us, you know, opportunities for the team to come together, utilizing discord. It sounds like you all have a culture of recognizing the humanity in each other before your role, which I think is incredibly powerful, especially during this time. Cause like, I sometimes feel like, you know, I'm a, I'm an Android half the time by how much I'm like connected to a machine. Um, you know, some like Skynet things for all of you like Terminator fans, which might be more people my age than not, but we'll see. Um, so I think by taking a moment to recognize that humanity, checking in, seeing how folks are doing while folks are working was is amazing. I love that. Um, let's shift over to your team, Megan. So Megan, Sky, Mayfield, what are you doing to build community with your SI leaders, among your SI leaders? How are you all staying connected during this really isolating time? or potentially isolating time. Potentially, yes, indeed. Um, so um, uh, so we also do monthly trainings um, that 
has never really, really stopped even when we went into quarantine. Um, and we are picking back up with uh, bi-weekly check-ins and um, more observations for um, from our discipline leads, so myself included. Um, I have my own little DL group where I have uh, three, four leaders that I observe their sessions mm -hmm. every other week, um, mainly to steal ideas because they usually have better ideas than I do. Um, <laughs> and then we get to, to chat about it during our check-ins as well. Um, uh, we're super pleased to bring this back because we kind of like, it was definitely more of a, a, a learning thing where we dropped the ball a little bit, um, but we, and then we just kind of lost part of that, that connection and we really wanted it back. So right. um, we worked out a better way to be able to do this in a way that, that was uh, much less isolating. And um, we do think that it's been working out pretty well. <laughs> It sounds like it. And I think this just like goes back to we're kind of forced to be creative in this time mm -hmm. period. And I think part of being creative is being willing to experiment. And it sounds like some you tried something, it didn't work, you all adapted, and now that those potential feelings of isolation are minimized. Um, Sky, anything to add to that? Yeah, something that I would like to add is that something that we wanted to do this semester is like really bring back the office, but digitally. So we have put up um, the digital SI office uh, where leaders can join like any time that they want to throughout the day and like maybe hang out with each other, do session plans or like fill out like um, their reflections. Um, something else that we like to do is like Megan and I have office hours, um, but something that I like to do in my office hours is not only take leaders questions, but kind of also um, provide games to play with them or even like just chatting and like um, getting to know like how they're doing in session and, and in life in general um, and something that we've been happy to bring back is digital birthday cards and digital Aww. appreciations um, because like even like throughout these times I feel like we can still appreciate each other you know maybe if like we um, did, were in someone's observation or we were in the office at the same time and stuff like that. Okay. I have one small follow-up, mostly because I'm a nerd and I'm the moderator, so I can do whatever I want. Um, what kind of games do you guys play in the SI office? I know Among Us was huge for a minute, but I feel like that disappeared. So what what are you know, what do you all gravitate towards? Because mostly I want to steal this and bring it to my digital SI office. One that is really fun is Scriblio. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it's the digital Pictionary. And there's also Spyfall. Spyfall is really cool. It's it's like Among Us, but you're trying to find the spy among everybody because you're FBI agents, like undercover. So that one's a really fun one. That sounds sick. I'm going to have to look into that. Oh, so Joey agrees spy fall is fun. So you know what? Let's shift the question to LA Pierce. Joey, in addition to maybe some games and stuff, what are what is your team doing? Oh, sure. Uh, so I think... I think that everyone's brought up some really great points so far. Uh, a lot of the things that are reflected here are the use of Discord that Mary brought up, the monthly breaks, breakup that James brought up. Uh, Mayfield's mentioned the bi-weekly check-ins. We do something similar. We have a mentor system where our tutor leaders sign up to meet with a group of tutors. Um, they can sign up as many times as they want. We look to get one to two times per semester and just sit them down for an hour and have a candid conversation about how things are going, what their expectations are, if they're being met, if there are things they're struggling with, if there are things they're seeing other people struggle with, um, we can get it all up on the table for them. That's been a very effective method for us. Um, uh, personally, for my math team, since we don't do specific embeds, um, we've built the community around ourselves. Uh, and, and the way I've thought about it is, what did we have in person? And what mm. do we want to recreate online? And, and one of the things that I didn't want to have happen was, welcome aboard, see you later, and then just disappear for a while. Uh, so that's why, that was why I went for Discord originally once I saw that kind of taking shape was I built up a math Discord for our team because I wanted that ability for someone to go, I don't know how to do this math problem. Oh, hey, this person's online. Can you help me out with this? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we pushed that really early on to maintain a place where we could have professional communication and just casual interaction like we've had in person at the Center for Academic Success. And we've also expanded. We like to do stuff like Jackbox every so often like that too. So uh, it's a combination of, of communication professionally, 
um, just interacting with a human being and the ability to, to have some some fun as well with it. I love that. I, I'm hearing, I think a lot of these answers are pointing towards like, what are some ways that we can replicate the physical learning space and turn it into a digital learning center space where we can kind of reconnect and, you know, build community to overuse the term. Um, Jocelyn, is there anything you want to add to what L.A. Pierce is doing? Well, okay, can anybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, uh, so something that I uh, do is ask, again, ask the professor what would they want? And mm. the good thing is that I got a good feedback, a good feedback from the astronomy liaison. And he said he would like to have a astronomy club. And I said, okay, I can do that. So what I did is I built up a Discord for the APC astronomy club where some of the astronomy tutors are there and also we have the students there. So the people who are very, very invested on astronomy, the astronomy field and probably the engineering part too um, are welcome there. And that's how I have built up the connection between the two, some of the tutors and the students and the professors too. Mm -hmm. Very nice. It's a really good combination. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a lot of cool things going on at different levels. Um, so we're actually making a wonderful time. So I think let's go ahead and transition to the last question. So we all work in learning assistance because we want to help other people on some level. We get joy and gratification for helping that student come to that new moment of learning. It's like, whoa, right? So a big part of building community is engaging the students and like providing that communal space for students utilizing our services. I'm sure we'll hear a little bit about this, but at least from my own experience, constantly in our like ev evaluations, at least for SI was, SI was one of the few times a student felt like they were on campus and that they were part of school um, and that they got to interact with others in a meaningful way. So this next question is about really, what are you doing to build community with the students that come to your digital learning center space, your digital tutoring session, your digital SI session? Because these, you know, Learning assistance is so powerful in that we move beyond the content and you know a lot of good human connections develop. So we're gonna start with Shafee College on this one. So Megan, Sky, uh, Mayfield, like what are you doing to build community when you're working with students utilizing your programs and services? Okay, so something that I would like to add um, is like a little bit of like what happens outside of session as well. So sure. um, something that we like to do is on our like our Canvas group pages, post an SI um, intro video. So introducing ourselves and kind of showing a little bit of our personality in there um, as well, and maybe talking about the program. Um, and then something that I would like to do um, when I was still SIing was do biweekly like check in emails like for all the students. Um, it was something that my instructor recommended um, for me to do um, and it was interesting because um, there were students who replied who weren't coming to my sessions so I still got to like talk to them um, and communicate with them um, so that was really nice um, also like if we wanted to, to make things more anonymous um, there's like google form check-ins where we got to hear from students um, also from outside of session and inside of session without knowing like who they were so we got to have that communication with them also um, you know, why they aren't coming to session or like what's um, something that's in the way that's stopping them from coming into session or um, if it's just the times that's not working for them. Um, and then something that I really like to do was do um, SI workshops with the instructor um, outside of session. So what these workshops usually were, they were Q&As um, run by the instructor and I. Mm -hmm. Um, and the students really liked that because sometimes they wouldn't get to see the instructor. I had like asynchronous um, courses fully, like asynchronous, I'm sorry. Um, so they never got to meet their instructor. So oh, that wow. was something that helped them as well. That's really cool. And I, what I really loved about the first part of your answer is I think a lot of our conversation focused on 
uh, some mode of synchronous engagement of building community. But I think like with the Google form check-ins, your kind of bi-weekly hype emails or check-in emails, or I forgot what terminology is. I think those are like also suggesting there are asynchronous ways we can still build this community. Like we don't need that active Zoom window to like feel like we're getting to know someone or connecting. Um, Mayfield, is there anything else you want to add to how you're building community with the students taking advantage of your program? Yeah, absolutely. So um, within within the session, um, I usually like to make use of icebreakers um, in a way that's like relevant to the content that we might go over, um, especially in a way to sort of process what's going on when you're in philosophy or history. Like, there's kind of a lot to work with right now. So, um, so I do enjoy. Well, enjoy is a weird word to use, but um, I do like to ask them. Um, various questions, you know, like, what's your quarantine hobby? Um, what sort of hobby did you just get into or get back into? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Um, I also uh, like to ask them just kind of how they're taking care of themselves as well, if they're comfortable with sharing that sort of information, because like, I know self care is like a really popular topic, but it's also a very personal one. So I like to mm -hmm. give them that option, whether they want to share that. Um, we've also opened up we normally have like a segment in our sessions called campus resources where we share any particular resources in um, uh, that our school is offering. We've opened it up to community resources as well. So if there are any food banks, if there are um, uh, you know COVID testing sites that are preferably free, um, we will we can share those as well. Um, and as a more more personal one, I suppose. Um, we, well, I like to really show, show appreciation to the students who are attending, um, or if they've read through a discussion post that I post that has like a session highlight. So maybe a really good activity that went super well in session, I can open it up to people who were unable to go. Um, but I really like to foster just that culture of appreciation and just sort of building that like, Accountability, account, uh, accountability, for lack of a better right, term. Right. Um, I like to call it accountability, buddy. I will put it in the chat. But yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, it's just kind of creating that form of um, that form of uh, community is is really very important, um, right. no matter how s small of a, an interaction it is. I like that. All right. I like, I mean, I like all that. It's like, it sounds like a lot of like, we're going to bring the community to them if they're having a hard time finding mm -hmm. who can help within the community. Exactly. Um, and Timron, can I add something? I'm so sorry. Yeah, please do. Um, I think one of the things that our leaders do really, really well is treating, um, we always really emphasize to them that all students are their students, right? So not just the students that walk in and ask for help, not just the students who go to SI sessions. And so, um, the way that they have been able to engage with the students who do not or cannot come to session is really, really beautiful to see. And so they will post discussion questions or meme challenges or silly things on their Canvas group page that all students have access to, not just the students who go to session. Um, and so I think that's something that is, it's just a really beautiful thing to see because it's reminding the students, you know, maybe you don't wanna come to session, maybe you can't come to session, but we're still here for you. Um, all students are our students. We don't have SI students and other students, right? Um, and so it's really lovely. And I've heard about some really lovely connections being made between students and SI leaders who haven't even been in session together, just um, offering that extra support. So just like a shout out to my leaders because, you know, they're awesome. That sounds awesome. Um, let's shift it over to, who's next on my list, sorry. I don't have everything memorized. LA Pierce. So let me go back to the call. So Jocelyn, Joey, what are you, what are y'all doing? Uh, um, Jocelyn, you yes. Uh, okay. So what I do to uh, uh, kind of make the students more comfortable in these in these settings, uh, such as them going to my uh, Zoom meetings is that it depends on what the class is and what do the instructor the instructor wants. Uh, some of them want just uh, do not want me to interact with them inside the class. So then I will make a video 
uh, for them, presenting myself uh, to them, um, and just sending them a video of me. If it was to inside the class and they want me to put my information so they can contact me, I would do that. And something that I will I love to do when sending emails is that I just don't only give them my schedule. I give them my Zoom link. I give them my email. They can contact me too. Uh, later on, I would put that this is a, they can trust me because I passed the class. And also something that I love, love to do, and oh, I always tell them to the, to the two T's, is about this quote from Carl Sagan. Uh, and the quote goes like this. Uh, there, are, there are naive questions, tedious questions, ill-phrased questions, questions that put you in inadequate, inadequate self-criticism. But every question is a cry to understand the world. There is no such thing as a dumb question. I always tell them that. It got to my heart when I was a little kid and I just tell them that too. Um, apart from that is always to make connection with them and tell them, what are, who are you? Like a little, like a little two sentences. Um, and I always tell them, I love astronomy. My favorite sport is swim. And my favorite gen genre of music is rock and classical music. I love it. So a lot of like kind of bringing everything back to that humanization element of you got to get to know who you're working with as human beings. That's what is going to get them to come back, gravitate towards you, open up and build those connections. Um, so getting deep into this conversation, I kind of lost my own sense of time. So this is going to be a my bad, but kind of hard to stop discussion or hurry things up because I think we can all agree we've been hearing some fantastic things. Um, but it is six till four o'clock. So I do want to make sure that we give time for what we want to call the trolley stop, where we'll throw out some announcements, some updates, some things um, verbally and through the chat. But we definitely encourage if you have time, if you've been liking what you're hearing, to stay on past four. Um, that's where we're going to go into breakout rooms. And that's where we will take a lot of the themes, questions, stuff that we've introduced to our panel and talk shop with folks all across this room, because I think all of us have some awesome ideas to share. We'll go into a little bit more detail um, at four, but Crystal, you want to take us through the trolley shop? Shop, stop real quick. Yeah, yeah thanks, Timuron. So um, I know that ACLA's got some really cool stuff coming up, including the ACLA conference, so I do want to give them an opportunity to talk about that a little bit. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you all. I know our lives are very busy right now and very crazy, so you all came here to connect um, and to share, and I really appreciate that. Um, we, um, uh, this semester, 3CSN is offering a workshop for peer educators every Friday at 3 p.m., including through everybody's spring break. So I know we all have different spring breaks, so we're just going to go all the way through. Um, each week, we have a different tutor or a different educator highlighting a different practice for peer educators. And again, when we think about peer educators, we're talking about SI leaders, uh, general tutors, embedded tutors. We we're talking about coaches. We're talking about mentors. Tours. We're going to be talking about any peer that's offering learning assistance to, um, to our students. So uh, we encourage you to come back every Friday. This link is the same link that we use every Friday. Um, and also, if you're interested in more stuff like this, uh, we have a whole organization 3CSN does, and I'm putting the link in the chat. Um, we have wonderful other opportunities that are happening through the week. Fridays at 3 p.m. is learning assistance hour. That's where we take over the airwaves, but there's a lot of other great stuff on equity, civic dialogue, um, stuff that you can use just to be, get better on Zoom, um, all kinds of wonderful stuff there. And it is all 100% free and 100% for you. Um, we're Chancellor's Office funded, so, um, so everything that we do is free to you in the Wayfinding series. So please do join us. Um, I did want to give um, ACLA a moment to talk about their conference, and then I'll tell you about what we're doing next. Cool. Um, Ted, want to give me a break and talk about the conference? <laughs> sure thing. <clears throat> you know, our ACLA conference, is it's going to be online this year, and it is a chance to network like we're doing today. We get together and talk about this stuff. We get into it more deeply. Um, we're going to have breakout sessions, and I do want you to know that... Um, Students are free to go to this conference, so please, it's going to be really easy this year. Just register 
If you're a student, come to the conference. It's a hundred dollar flat rate if you're not a student, um, but it's going to be a really exciting time to really network and be in community because like we were talking about with our tutors, it's the community is what keeps us going. It helps us get up in the day, it helps us face challenges, and it also just helps to make our jobs enjoyable because what's better than being with each other, which is really nice. So I'll leave it there. Uh, Timmer Hunt's got the conference at a glance there. It's going to be three days. It'll be through Pathable, which is a really nice web app um, that's gonna make it really fun. We also have games that you can play and get points and you will win prizes. So that's another reason to come. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you all. Beautiful, thank you.